If there really was a flood, I often get the question, well, where were there, where's all the humans? Why aren't there more human bones? There should be, you know, bazillions of human bones buried. I mean, we find lots of clams, find lots of other animals. And it's true, of all the fossils formed, Jonathan, I don't know if you know the percentage, it's like 90% of all the fossils formed are marine organisms. Have you read something like that? And, 90 or 98, you know, animals that live in the water, okay. Very few mammal fossils are found and very few, you know, uh, human fossils are found. Marvin Lubinow, in his book, Bones of Contention, it's the best one I'm aware of on the topic. He's a creationist, but he spent years and years and years, like 25 years, studying all the human remain bones, human remains. He says there are about 4,000 human remains have been found. Now, and it's compared to clams, you know, we find billions of those, or fish, billions of those. Why only 4,000? Well, there's a couple of things to consider. Why so few human bones are found? And by the way, they're all 100% human. Actually, the Neanderthals had thicker bones than we have. They were in much better condition. They were like, they say the average Neanderthal could pick up a football player and fling him over the goalpost. I mean, they were just incredible condition. The muscular uh, structure must have been great. But when God made the world 6,000 years ago, there were two people but it was full of plants and full of animals. 4,400 years later, it was still full of plants and full of animals and still not full of people. I have no idea what the population was at the time of the flood. This is just a pure guess with probably a billion people. If you figure they're living 900 years and having 70 or 80 kids per family, uh, you know, that's what you need, Tanya, about 70 kids, right? Uh, it would be a large population in a hurry, but let's just pick a number and say there was a billion. Why are so few found as fossils? Well, the purpose of the flood, according to Genesis, was to destroy man off the earth. That's why God did the flood. The Bible says there were giants in the earth in those days, and there were mighty men of old. So, I don't know for sure what that means, but I suspect that might mean the people were bigger before the flood came. We've covered on video two about some of the giant fossil skeletons that have been found. People nine feet tall, ten feet tall, twelve feet tall. I don't know if everybody was that big or not, but certainly it appears some of them were. So there are several the theories of why so, human, so few human bones have been found. Number one, there were less people to be killed. There aren't as many people available. So you're not going to find as many bones of them. Okay? You're going to find more animals and more fish and clams and stuff like that. Secondly, people are smarter than animals. Well, some people. And they would tend to avoid drowning until the last possible minute. Whereas animals would get surprised and covered up and buried, the humans would figure out some way to avoid this. Plus, it probably took about six months to kill everybody. I mean, the flood covered the world, but it doesn't mean it covered the whole world instantly. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. And probably what we see today, the continental shapes and everything, obviously is a pure coincidence based on the water level. And everything was flexing up and down during the flood we covered on video 6. So, if the earth was totally different, different, different configurations, unrecognizable by today's globe, but as the crust of the earth is flex, flexing up and down, the water's slowly coming up from the fountains of the deep that are broken open. <clears throat> the rain was 40 days, but the water kept coming up for 150 days. So if we start with the assumption that during the flood, there were uh, high ground above water may have lasted for six months. The high ground getting smaller and smaller, and people would run to high ground, and they also have the tide. The moon is causing the tide. The moon doesn't know or care that there's a flood on the earth. It's just, you know, pulling the water up. So the tide may go up, cover an area, and then go down, and people and animals would run to the new, newly exposed island. You know, ah, oh, here's high ground. Get over there. So we'd find footprints in these mud, mud layers, that then would get covered up with the next tide. I mean, every six and a half hours, the tide changes. High tide to low tide, six hours and 25 minutes average. So as these mud layers are full of footprints, they bake in the sun just for a couple hours, enough to get a skin on them, and then a new mud layer washes in on top from the next tide. It is highly probable that during this flood, during these first few months of the flood, you would get thousands of layers deposited for multiple reasons, we cover on video six, and you may have footprints within each of these layers. We had a guy called into the radio program yesterday, uh, the guy from Sweden that calls in once in a while, you know, to our radio program, evolutionist. He says, well, we find layers of rock and footprints between the layers. He said, that proves each layer was exposed for thousands of years. No, that proves it was exposed for maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> Not proof, doesn't prove it's exposed for thousands of years. So yes, it's possible to get footprints, and especially if you look at all the, nearly all the footprints are running the same direction. What would that mean? They're trying to avoid something. They're all going the same way. Probably avoiding the flood water. And in Psalm 104, 
It says, the mountains arose, the valleys sank down. So during the flood, the crust of the earth was all broken up into plates. And they're much more flexible and movable than they are today. Today they're kind of locked into position as most of the water is gone that was underneath, that was lubricating this movement. So they could run to high ground and then of course a couple days later that may not be high ground. Something else becomes high ground as the plates twist around. So second reason though, people are smarter and probably would avoid drowning. If they end up on top, they don't rot. I mean they rot, they don't fossilize. How many buffalo got killed out west in the last 200 years? Like millions? None of them fossilized. See, things only fossilize if they're buried. So you could have a lot of humans get killed toward the end of the flood, or toward the middle of the flood, I guess, and not be fossilized at all. Thirdly, if humans were bigger, they would not be recognized as human. I mean, if you find a five-foot thigh bone, you're not going to recognize it as a human. You say, oh, it must be from a, you know, a dinosaur cave bay or something. So those are the reasons why so few human fossils have been found. Fourthly, I'm not sure who's doing the counting. When they say 4,000 have been found, uh, who's counting all these? Marvin Lubinow says that's what he can find in the, in the published record. But how many things have been found that are human, fossilized, in certain layers, but it doesn't match the established scientific paradigm of the day? And so they say, we better not even report this. Because you're not allowed to find humans with dinosaurs or else, man, you're going to lose your job. You can't go against the evolution theory. It's a carefully protected state religion. I point out, no human and chicken bones have been fossil, found fossilized together in the same rock strata anywhere in the world. So that proves humans and chickens did not live at the same time. No. <laughs> you know that's not good logic, okay? We don't have to find the bones together to prove they live together. We don't have to find the footprints, to, footprints together to prove anything either. No human and chicken footprints have ever been found together. No coelacanth fossils were found for 65 million years of their geologic column. They've got their geologic column and they say, oh, coelacanths lived 65 million years ago. How do you know? Well, that's the last fossil we found of them. And then they find them still alive. What does that prove? For 65 million years, by their thinking, no coelacanths lived or no coelacanths fossilized. Obviously, they would say none, it just happened that none fossilized. Well, it could be that none of the humans fossilized either that were buried or weren't buried deep enough or they haven't been found yet. All kinds of reasons for that.